Um, I, I left this slide up just to let you all know that uh, you could uh, get your dial-in and VoIP instructions on GoToMeeting. We're planning on talking for about an hour here, and then we'll allow for another 15 minutes or so for Q&A. We're recording this um, at the end, or sometime after the end of the presentation. Uh, we'll uh, give you the information and allow you to uh, um, access the recording. Um, your information won't appear in the recording, um, and the Q&A we're not going to record either. Um, also, after the event, we're going to—I'll make the slides, um, all the files that I use, and uh, the recording available, as well as uh, we'll all, we'll send you all codes so that you can download the hacking the OT white paper. Now, if you have problems during the webcast, um, send email to support at scriptorium.com and someone will come in and tell me sometimes, uh, say, say my phone dropped off and uh, nobody was able to tell me that, that they couldn't hear me anymore. So um, so if you do have problems, just uh, email support at Scriptorium. All right. So in today's uh, webcast, we're going to be talking about um, the DITA Open Toolkit and how to use it. So we'll start out with a, an introduction to the DITA Open Toolkit. Um, we spend a little while just working our way around the Open Toolkit, learning where things are, um, setting the scene before we actually get into any modifications that we can do. But um, uh, after a while, and talk about Apache Ant, we'll then get on to doing some CSS changes so you can see things change almost immediately. Um, we'll talk about um, HTML headers and footers, and how you can modify those to the Open Toolkit. Then we'll move on to a little bit more advanced stuff and talk about uh, customizing XSL for the DIT, um, DIT Open Toolkit. And finally, we'll um, show you an example of how to do a um, s small subtopic specialization of the DIT Open Toolkit. Um, just to keep background noise and distractions out, I'm going to um, mute you all. If uh, if you do have questions, you can also use the chat window. Um, I'd prefer it if you can save your questions for the Q and A session. But uh, if uh, you have an ooh 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 moment, then uh, use the chat window. Muted. I'm muting you all. So just make sure you can hear me. All right. So what is the DITA Open Toolkit? Well, DITA defines um, a lot of elements for um, marking up your content. The DITA specification goes through all of the topic types and what are all the elements, what are all the attributes, and you use that for marking up your content in DITA. But there's nothing in the DITA specification that describes how, the, um, how your DITA content should then be formatted. So the DITA Open Toolkit then fills in that gap. So this is an important thing to, to know right off the bat. Um, the DITA Open Toolkit depends on the DITA specification, but um, it really is a separate entity. They're not, they're not linked. So now one of the problems with the DITA Open Toolkit for producing your output is that its output is very generic. It's very basic. And in many ways, this is what it should be because um, you know, there's no way for them to predict what you need to do in your specific output. And so this is one of the reasons why we got into um, moving things around and trying to figure out what can we do in the DidOpen Toolkit to make our content look attractive or make our content um, match what our customers' um, style guides call for. Now, one interesting thing to note is that um, actually, from the DITA op uh, Open Toolkit group, you'll hear um, a couple of different uh, approaches. And some people on the Open Toolkit group say that um, this, the, the DITA Open Toolkit is actually just a reference implementation. They say there are many, many different ways of generating output from DITA, and we're offering just one. Others will say, um, oh yeah, the DITA Open Toolkit is the absolute, it's the be all and end all, it's the only way you should be um, generating DITA output um, and get very ruffled about uh, seeing other people doing DITA implementations. So um, I leave that to you, make up your own mind, see what you think about it. Um, but uh, it's just good to know that that debate is there. 
So the skills necessary for um, modifying the DID Open Toolkit. Um, at the start, you of course need XHTML. Now, XHTML means what you need. What we mean is HTML, but with um, XML parsing rules. So you know that in HTML you can get very loose with things. You don't have to necessarily close out tags like li. You don't have to put a close li on it. Um, if you do an hr, you can just put in an hr tag. You don't have to actually code it as an open tag. You can have attributes without quotation marks around them. In XHTML, of course, all of those things are necessary. Um, an additional skill, um, of course, is uh, being able to work with CSS. Um, we use CSS, of course, for, for doing most of the styling for the HTML we generate from the Open Toolkit. The Open Toolkit itself works using Apache Ant, and so it's a good idea to at least have a, a rudimentary understanding of Apache Ant, and we'll take a look at some of that in just a couple of minutes. As you get more advanced and um, want to do more things, uh, it's worthwhile learning XSLT, the um, transformation language for XML. Um, and just as a side note, uh, a little selling point, Scriptorium does offer a course, a, a week-long course in um, XSLT. So if you're interested in using XSL in publishing, then you might want to take a look at that course. Um, getting further down into specialization, you also need to know um, how to work with DTDs and the structure of the DTDs in the um, in did open toolkit. Finally, if you're going to be doing a PDF out, then you'll also need to know XSLFO, the formatting option. Um, we're not going to touch on FO today, but um, a lot of the stuff that you learn today is going to form a good background, and you're going to be able to then go to apply these same things using FO. Now. I, I called this paper sort of jokingly, or the, the whole um, presentation, everything rather jokingly, started out calling it hacking the did open toolkit. And this is in the in the true spirit of hacking. Um, that is, you know, just experimenting, trying things out. I was driving home last night and thinking about this, and and realized that in some ways it, I should call this um, did open toolkit and the shade tree mechanic. Because um, at least at the start, what you're doing is just getting in, getting under the hood with the Ditto Open Toolkit, figuring out where things are, and making little tweaks and getting things going the way you want them to go. Now, so when I talk about hacking, what, I'm, what I mean there is just going into the Open Toolkit and changing, making the changes that, that uh, get done what you need. Now, there's a continuum between hacking and elegance. And of course, in elegance, um, you use the existing frameworks and structures and things to do things so that they're much more portable, so that you can um, uh, they can be used by many other people, they can be read by other people and understood what's going on. Um, there's several things that I talk about in here where we start out hacking and then we slowly move toward elegance and uh, using the frameworks that uh, the did open toolkit provides for um, for making these changes. Um, so, uh, as I say here on the slide, the, the Open Toolkit does provide a number of good formal structures that you can use for that way. You can actually make your, make your changes much more, um, uh, much more portable. There's a large number of versions and version numbers we have to deal with here, and I want to point out a couple of them and some uh, misconceptions or confusion that can result from them. Um, first off, to use the DID Open Toolkit, you're, you do need to have the JDK 1.5 or 1.6 on your machine. And so this is a Java development kit. This is not the JRE. So you actually need the JDK, and that's because that's required by Ant to run. Um, the XML version, we're still using XML 1.0. In DITA, um, we, um, we're using DITA 1.1. Now, there is a um, forthcoming change version of DITA, DITA 1.2. Um, that should be available probably at the end of the year. The DITA Open Toolkit um, that we're using is 1.4.3. And again, there's a new version of the DITA 0.1. 